so let's move on the on the discussion. I just wanted to quickly give an opportunity for both of you to introduce yourself uh, related on what's your role. Let's start with Luca because and then we go to the dinosaurs uh, after Luca, right? But just kidding. Um, so so Luca, that's an interesting you... comment because in <laughs> theory I've been more in SharePoint. That is true, actually. Microsoft that's true. than Pat. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> but Pat is older than me, so it depends. How do you see that? Yeah, and and I, I and and I need to be clear on this one. We do work together with these two peer persons day to, on the day to day basis. So I'm not insulting them. <laughs> oh, just for Randomly. the record, guys, we have been known for seventeen years, something like something that. Something like that. Yeah. So it's just like an old couple. I just we look at each other just like damn it, pass me the butter and yell at each other, and then we still love each other, but that's okay. Anyhow, welcome. Anyhow. Everybody. No, okay, so, so let's let's actually start with you, Lucas. So when did you join a Microsoft and what's your role related on SharePoint Framework? So what's what are the things we can blame on you on that one? Uh, of course, you can, just like you said before, you can blame on me on everything. And, <laughs> that's, that's, and then I will blame on you, so that's fine. <laughs> that's but, fine. Hi, everybody. My name is Luca Bandinelli. I've been in Microsoft for almost 20 years, which is a lot of time started in Microsoft Consulting Service back in 2000 in Italy. Then I, the first gig was basically building the support readiness for Tahoe. That's what it was. So look at that. Then after that, I moved uh, at Europe level uh, with what was called the SharePoint Rangers, was one of the few SharePoint Rangers together with Vesa at one point in Europe and Kimo and Aku. And then Moved to the product group where I built the SharePoint CAD team. Then I built the Office 365 customer advisory team. And now I am in the SharePoint framework dev crew and I am the PM of SharePoint framework. What it means is that the official description is I work as part of the feature crew in order to be able to design the right feature and functionalities, providing the feedback and the customer angle to the engineer so that the engineers can build, can, can build a great software. In reality, I beg Pat and his crew to try to listen to me and do a little bit of what I like to do and they do whatever they want and they always win. <laughs> One way of putting that. So that's a good definition of our engineering process, right, Pat? Absolutely. <laughs> do you want to do a quick intro to you as well? Sure. Uh, so I'm Pat Miller. I'm the dev manager or engineering manager, dev lead for the SharePoint framework. Um, my background, a uh, company I worked for in Vancouver got bought by Microsoft in 2001. We became content management server. Did that for a couple of releases, then a uh, replatted and rewrote it to run on top of SharePoint for the 2007 release. I did the page model, navigation, caching and stuff for that. Uh, then I did the taxonomy system for a release or two, did some search stuff. Um, and then uh, joined the developer platform team and made SPFX. Now, um, and, and that's good intro, we don't, well, we have 13 minutes, so just, um, I'm, I'm not going to spend too much time on the historical things, uh, but obviously, um, we, we are working kind of together, Pat and Luca more closely, uh, because they're physically on the same office, and then I'm the, the third person yelling uh, well, from this side of the pond <laughs> on random things, um, right? And is that right way of finding actually we yell to each other as well even if you're <laughs> in the same office so. yeah, that's fair that is fair <laughs> but now um if you think about the sharepoint framework so there's a few questions which came actually on the chat window already and if there's any questions which people are interested to ask feel free to use time window i'm catching those as we as we talk um now if we think about sharepoint framework uh we are now waiting for sharepoint framework 1.9 to get back released um which is yeah. one of the things that's probably one of the questions which people would be asking already that I, I want to use library components, I want to go to GA and production with them. When is 1.9.1 coming out? Okay, yeah, so 191 should come out uh, this week. We found one other hiccup with the new uh, Edge 
Chromium browser and the local workbench that we're trying to see if it's a quick fix. Um, I realize there's some people using that, but it's not a, a released browser per se. So uh, we'll see what the issue is around that, and then we'll get it out. So it should be quite soon this week. Yep. So hopefully by by end of this week. And and by the way, we have agreed internally in engineering that we do not ship on Friday. So um, even though we, every single week we are always debating about that about that one. Yeah, now we don't want to ship it so until it's working. Sorry. I was just saying, I'm still waiting for that shirt. Yeah, I'll, I'll catch you the shirt when, the next time I'm in Redmond, definitely. Um, do not ship on Friday. Now, um, one of the one of the uh, things, if we, if we think about SharePoint Framework, it's now three, two and a half year old, uh, which is actually kind of cool. We're closing into the, the third year. And, and what is both of your kind of a take on this random discussion point where, where people are always saying that Microsoft comes up with a new developer model in every single three years. Uh, will that happen this time? Oh, you didn't tell them? That <laughs> <laughs> of course we are not. Uh, so no, uh, and then and Pat, please chime on that. Ch chime on that. Sure. But uh, we are completely um, dedicated and committed on the SharePoint framework. And as I hope you guys are seeing, uh, there is uh, um, very much intentions and actions to expand the broadness of SharePoint framework above and beyond SharePoint. We released the Teams integration uh, later. I mean, at one point this year, we worked with uh, and still working with the Office client and Office uh, web client team in order to uh, be sure that there is an evolution on Office add-ins that include the SharePoint framework. We teased some a preview on SPC uh, last uh, time in May. So absolutely, not only we are committed, but we are also working very, very hard to consolidate SharePoint framework across Office and Microsoft 365 so that uh, we can adjust and um, uh, evolve the framework itself to be able to fulfill more and more requirements and scenarios. And anything you want to add there, Pat? It's just that I'm not jumping on the. Uh, no, that seems uh, pretty reasonable. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Ship okay. it. Ship it. Yes. Now, and obviously there, there's there's always the discussion, like Paul is uh, in the chat window saying that how, when do we want to be renamed that, and when is it renamed? And and that's actually a marketing decision. Uh, so we uh, we're not gonna actually talk about the timings of potential renaming and alignments uh, at this call. Uh, but I think the number one uh, thing to remember is that we keep on investing. Actually, we're increasing the investments on SharePoint Framework. Um, for me, last week I, I noticed a user voice entry where somebody was saying um, that somebody from Microsoft said that uh, SharePoint Framework is now ready and we are reducing the investments. Which no, 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 no. Uh, it, it's not definitely ready. Or is it that? What's your thinking on, yeah, on the future framework of SharePoint Framework? Ready? Yes. Ready for what? what <laughs> exactly. <laughs> what does that mean? Precisely. Precisely. Um, now, uh, coming back on the on a few of the questions, what what we're having on a chat window. Uh, so there was a one question related on the kind of an interesting dimension on the questions. Well, more and more people are moving on also in our premises on the SharePoint 2019 platform. And then uh, there was a question related on SharePoint framework and the site collection app catalogs. And why is there any specific reason why the site collection app catalogs are not supported? Or why did we chose to use 1.4.1? And apparently we are not going to upgrade that version um any any well what would be the the reasoning behind after that so i can obviously mention that as well but uh that's sure. uh so i'm trying to find that question in the chat but that's fine um so why did we choose one for one or well, that wasn't specifically on the question question more on the app catalog uh but okay. uh, since we're talking about on premises i think it's it's good to cover that Sure. So effectively, what happened for on the on-prem release was uh, the entire organization took a snapshot at a specific time and said, "This is what uh, is going to be part of the 2019 release because that's been running, it's been stable." Uh, and then we package that up and uh, do more validation testing, do the work on top of that to make sure. 
that it doesn't have uh, the service tendrils and stuff in it. Um, and the feature set at that time was 1.4, and app catalogs weren't there, and extensions I don't think were there either. Um, they are. They are in 1.4. They were released in 1.3. Extensions? Yes. Okay. I thought 1.4.1 was the beta for extensions, but maybe not. Um, fair enough. Uh, whatever stuff was there <laughs> was uh, is what is shipped, and so uh, to upgrade or to bump just the SPFX version to, I don't know, 1.9, let's say, um, does require a bunch of server changes as well and app changes, and it's sort of a cascading thing that's not something that uh, the SPFX team can do. It has to be something that the entire organization has to do because the, um, the ramifications are that everything has to get updated. Yes, that and, and that would kind of a, between the line. Yeah, that you're answering the question and between the lines, and and we can actually uh, pretty much say that we're not looking into up upgrading the SharePoint framework version for SharePoint 2019. That's what it means, basically, what uh, Matt is saying, because the the implications of changing the version would be too dramatical, um, and that would require basically a rewriting of the SharePoint 2019. So oh. it's it's not an option for us, unfortunately. We would love to do that, though. So. Now, there was a, a question from uh, uh, also related on SP HTTP patch uh, components, and I'm looking into getting that to uh, GA soon. That was from Oliver Seisinger. From yes, yeah, so Oliver had a couple questions there we can talk about. Uh, so the first one is easier to answer, uh, which is the uh, the socket IO, uh, I can't remember what the actual component is called. Um, there we go. Uh, list subscriptions, GA. Uh, so I believe that should be coming soon. The, the reason why it wasn't GA to begin with is that the API that it's based on in the back end wasn't GA. And so shipping a, our component is GA when it's based on a beta endpoint didn't seem like the right thing. Uh, I believe that, that uh, the endpoint is out of beta. So basically, as soon as the beta, as soon as the endpoint is out of beta, uh, we'll remove our beta dev preview flag on it, and it'll be GA. Yep. Um, yep. As for the batch, so we spent some time with uh, the community talking about the HTTP client batch and making that go GA. Uh, right now, there's a couple problems with it, with how it deals with nested promises and promises not getting resolved, which is a bad pattern. Uh, and so we had a couple of different solutions for how to do that that changes the API to some extent. Uh, but honestly, the feedback we got from most people was uh, you need to support batching more richly on the back end APIs before you ever put it on the, the client libraries. And so that's sort of where the stumbling block is right now for that to go live. Cute, uh, that's good. Uh, now uh, we we need to rush on on some of the questions. There was a kind of combined question related on open source out of the box web parts or open sourcing the Yeoman generator. Um, not on the same question, but it's around open source uh, topics. Any any plans on those? Uh, so yes, on the generator, that's something that we have control over, um, and that's on our list of things to consider. We're not opposed to that in any way. Um, the first party web parts, uh, open sourcing them becomes a bit more tricky. We can't just open source what we have right now because it's full of uh, I don't know, internal telemetry and monitoring and that sort of stuff, which wouldn't make any sense or be compilable. Um, I don't know what the, what the story is for that. Um, yeah, I, I would we'll, we'll, so on, on on that one. other than, hey, here's some more advanced uh, examples of what's being done. But as far as, hey, this is what we're shipping and keeping it live and up to date and shipping what is in the public repo and stuff, that I don't. Yeah. I'm, I'm, sure. I'm going to actually get John Sanders on the on the September monthly call. So we can talk about John, Chander, yeah. John Sanders we'll owns different. all of the web parts uh, in the Art of the Box and online. So. Uh, uh, and then uh, extensions in the local workbench. Any plans on um, enabling that development? That was from Gautam. Uh, I mean, it's 
it is on the list of things. It's not, I'll be honest, it's not particularly high on the list of things. Um, yeah. Uh, the, yeah, the future of that, um, does it make sense to have extensions there? What extensions do you actually mean? Uh, if it's simply, hey, we have the top placeholder uh, and bottom placeholder, that's one thing. If it's, can you support uh, list customizations in the workbench, that's a, a huge chunk of work because now it also means that we have to have all the list infrastructure in the workbench. And at that point in time, you're kind of shipping an offline version of uh the lists and libraries and i'm not sure if that's the the right long-term decision yeah cute question then we have few kind of uh let's say content management related what's the sharepoint framework's role in the biggest game sharepoint framework is the ux uh, development uh, capability in sharepoint online or in on-premises so um it everything what we see is being built on sharepoint framework using the third part developed by first party which is the engineering or developed by third party which is the community so customers and partners now um just looking into nothing any specific questions there we are though also running out of time uh, so i think it's actually time to close up now i'm curious on also hearing uh, after this call um, is this interesting uh, discussions and is this something where we should book more time uh, on having an open discussion with the people from engineering on the specific ownerships uh, so we could actually have a separate potentially separate community calls or separate uh, amas around the people who own a specific uh, functionalities in the SharePoint, because that would then give more insights on, on where we're heading and why we're heading and, and also understanding the decision uh, implications. Uh, because I think even though you would be an external uh, consultant, it's probably valuable to understand the reasoning behind of the decisions, which is definitely a good thing. So please do give us feedback on that one. I, and I already see some uh, on the chat as well. But OK, uh, we are running out of time. So thank you, Luca and Pat. It's not a super long chat. Uh, thank you for both of you on, on introducing who you are. These are the people who are running the day-to-day -day program in the engineering side or making things happen. Obviously, there's a larger group of engineers than writing the actual code because PMs are not allowed to write any code. But you are allowed to write some code, right? Occasionally. Okay. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so Thank much you. though. I just asked questions. <laughs>